good evening. Thank you for coming, and welcome to everyone on the web. I'm Jonathan Alcorn, an editorial photographer based in Los Angeles. I shoot for Reuters News Pictures a lot, one of my best clients. Getty Images, New York Times, things like that. But I'm here. Actually, this is one of my career highlights as a, as a news photographer. That was the Los Angeles Times Northridge Earthquake Edition newspaper, and we won the Pulitzer Prize for that edition. And um, I'm very proud of that. It's a long time ago, but excuse me. Anyway, OK, moving along. This is a shot I did of the space shuttle being moved in, in through the streets of Los Angeles. And I, I put it up because this is the kind of things I like to shoot for Instagram looking with the mixed light. I had TV lights coming in here and also the ambient skylight. And I just look for different kinds of lights. So most of my Instagram photos are of Venice Beach where I live and I shoot primarily in about a mile radius of right where I live almost every day if I can. And what I love about that is it has taken me to the place where I'm shooting almost every day I see this, the same scenery but I look, it, it pushes me to look more deeply and to push myself to limits that I wouldn't do normally if I wasn't in that area every day because it gets kind of boring if you just take the same picture constantly. So I found it, it's helped me to grow so much as a photographer and when I go on my assignments, it's, it's bled into that where I definitely try to get things that look different. So one of the things is, I've shot this sign a million times but at a certain time of the year, we get the reflection or the shadow from the Venice sign on the ground. And that's my good buddy who opened a um, coffee business on that cart. And we decided he wanted to do an Instagram photo. And I was like, oh, I know the perfect spot. And I knew at that time of the year, because I'm there every day, I know, oh, the shadow comes perfectly at that time of the year. So it worked out perfectly. I'll often check the weather report and to see if are the waves big. If they are, I'll go out with a more of a telephoto lens to shoot the big waves. So I, I like to plan ahead as much as I can. Like I don't just walk out without some kind of an idea of what it is I'm going to look for on a particular day. So that day there was a nice nice waves and I knew it. So I brought out the lens I thought would be perfect shooting from the pier. So there is some planning involved for me to do it because I'm shooting it every day and if I just walk out there, there's, there's, so much, there's so much going on in Venice, you can just get lost and come back with nothing you're proud of. So I try to have at least a little bit of a game plan before I walk out there. Like I said, I check the weather report and it affects the lens choice I'm going to use. If, if there's going to be a whole bunch of high clouds at sunset, I'm like, well, I definitely want to show the clouds today. I'm going to try to find a spot and I'll bring a wide angle lens with me to show, you know, I'm just, I'm focused on the clouds that day. I'm not worrying about what, 10 lenses and I just want to get out there and, and not have a bunch of equipment on me. One camera, maybe one lens, maybe another lens with me if, if, it, if it's necessary, if I'm thinking, oh, I, might, I might be able to do some telephoto and wide angle today. So I try to, to keep that in mind. And then I think about, since I'm there all the time, I know at certain times where the light's going to be. And that really helps. When you're, when you're shooting in the same area all the time, you want to make it look different as much as you can each time you're out there. So I'll think, oh, it's a, it's, the sun is going to come up in the wintertime. It rises to the south. And I'm like, okay, the shadows are gonna be great, say on the Venice canals, and I already have something in my mind that I'm gonna go look for, instead of walking around shooting everything aimlessly. Because it really is a challenge to shoot the same area every day if you don't use your thinking cap. 
This is, um, I shoot the Malibu Triathlon every year for the Children's Hospital. And they always line up to run into the water right as the sun comes up. So I'm like knowing it. At 6.55, I need to be in that position. The first year, I didn't get this. The second year, I knew. 6.55 a.m., I was there waiting right when the sun came up and it created those great shadows and the, the beautiful light. There's an example of the clouds are amazing. So my, my main focus was I am going to go out and shoot the clouds. And I had just joined the image logger program. That was the first image logger photo I took. And I was really happy with it. So, and I think Samsung was too, or I wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> Another day, I just wanted to get a nice surfer shot. Went out with a long lens. I, I waited a long time, and there were so many surfers always at Venice. So if you're trying to shoot every single uh, surfer, you get, you get bogged down. And so I, what I do is I look for the best surfer, the one that's doing the best moves, and I just kind of watch him instead of trying to get each guy. Because I'm like, I saw this guy, and I'm like, oh, he's ripping it. So you might have to wait 10 minutes per, per wave, but patience is really pays off, you know? Uh, Samsung NX30 with the 50 to 200 lens, it's like a 35, and a 35 millimeter would be a 320 equivalent, so that's like a 320. The water was up to about here on me. Yeah, it came out nice, huh? Thank you. <coughs> They have a drum circle in Venice every, every Sunday, and it gets a little rowdy sometimes. And that, I was, I was walking on the beach, and the, the previous two weekends, they had near riot conditions. And so I was definitely out there. I'm like, okay, there's probably gonna be another riot this weekend. So I came out, and they were clearing this off, but that's the helicopter light coming down from the top. And that's an example of the kind of light that I, I love to look for. Just anything where people go, oh, God, where did that light come from? What is that? To me, when I get that, I feel like, okay, I'm, I pushed myself enough today where people are like, oh, my God, how'd you do that? That is the, most, the best compliment I can ever get when people ask me, how, how did you do that or what is the light source? And that was with the, um, I think I shot that with the NX500. Um, another thing is I vary my angles. I love to shoot low and, you know, I'm a little older now, I get a sore back and these, the new cameras with the tilted display in the back are my best friend. Put the camera on the ground. I, actually, I sat down on this one cross-legged and just waited, parked myself in that spot and I waited probably 10, 15 minutes. I got some shots kind of like that but I just kept shooting and shooting. I had something, I'm like, this is pretty good, but I'm gonna wait, and the sky was amazing. And that kid came in, and it was just perfect, you know? And I, did, I never even said a one word to him, but I'm there all the time, and they know me. They're not thinking I'm some guy there just for whatever, they, they know me. I, I, have a, I have a relationship with a lot of people in the area, and I'm recognizable with my cameras, and I kind of dress the same a, a lot, so, that's, that's a real advantage of shooting in your home base all the time is you start to blend in. People, because there's tourists all over the place and I hear the guys, oh, those are tourists, but with me, I can get right up close and they don't even care, you know? They're not like, what are you doing, man? You're too close, so. Um, it's, a real, it's a real excellent way to, 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 to take photos that are beautiful and not set up and the more that people are accepting of you being there, the more real the photos are, in my opinion. I won't do that again. So I'm just trying to reinforce that at, at first I was, I was like, I'm not gonna shoot here anymore. I've, I've gotten a lot, enough good pictures in Venice, who cares? And then when I became in the image logger program, I thought, you know what, I have all these really great lenses before I was only doing mobile photography at the beach. So it opened up a whole new, a whole new avenue of photos for me. Um, 
And I started thinking completely outside the box. I, I got a, uh, a little cover for my camera that you can actually put in the water and shoot with the, with the small mirrorless cameras recently. And that has been an amazing, completely new thing for me to shoot in the water. Um, this is a, like at the end of a storm drain, a grate on it. And I just put my camera exact, I lay it right onto the grate and have it leading in. And people are always shooting there, but people like to stand on top and pose there. And I was just trying to get something a little bit different. And then those are the, the rocks on the breakwater. This is actually in Venice too. That was um, Harrison Ford's plane that he crashed uh, about six months ago. And that kind of thing is, is really good to put on Instagram. If say you're shooting, you happen to be at something like that, you put that on Instagram or Twitter and hashtag Harrison Ford, and then you have a decent shot, I guarantee you, you will be getting contacted by news agencies, TV stations, they'll, they'll buy your photo. So that's another great thing about Instagram is the hashtagging, it can open up a whole new world for you, it has for me. Another shot that's in Santa Monica, a couple miles from where I live. They opened this new park and there was great architecture there. And um, that photo I just put on Instagram, I got contacted two or three weeks later by a, a, a pretty well-known architecture magazine. They were doing a story on the new park because it's a very, a lot of native plants and they were really interested in it. And that ended up being on the cover and I, I made it, uh, I think I made about $1,000 off of that photo that I just shot for the fun of it. And it has really expanded my business actually. And the thing is, is like, I drove by there almost every day and I kept thinking, I'm gonna go back there when there's some good light and a little bit of clouds and I had a little bit of a plan, checked the weather report, went up there and I just started waiting and waiting. These people walked in and it just came together. That's the uh, cover. I've taken a million shots of these lifeguard towers. And I, I had a friend of mine, he's like, dude, I don't want to see any more lifeguard tower shots. And I'm like, okay, you're right, I do shoot them too much. But then I thought, how can I do this differently? And I kind of saw the sun peeking through that window there on the tower. I moved around to get it in the right spot and I got that shot and I'm like, I'm posting this one because I want to see if my friend actually is going to go, hey, that was a pretty good shot of the lifeguard tower. And turns out a neighbor of mine ended up getting that shot as a tattoo on his arm because he loved it so much. And I was like, that is the greatest compliment I've ever had. Someone has used my art as the basis for his tattoo on his body for the rest of his life. I was like, that's nuts. So I still shoot the lifeguard towers. I don't turn too many of them into Instagram anymore, but if I get something different, I'll do it because people love that stuff, you know? Maybe some of my photographer friends get like, oh, you're always doing the same thing, but I love that people like what I'm doing. It makes me feel good when I get comments like, oh, that's such a beautiful shot. I mean, to me, that's why I got into photography in, in the beginning was to make a difference. And if it's just making people happy for a few minutes, I'm feeling good about it. I'm never afraid to push the ISO. I shot this on, on like 10,000 ISO. It was dusk. I saw the truck coming. It's something like many times I had tried and never gotten the right way. I saw the surfer coming and I just, as soon as he got in the frame, I just laid down on the motor drive, bam, bam, bam. And I loved how it came out and I loved the grain actually too. So don't be afraid to push your ISOs, shoot in light that's, that you normally wouldn't. You surprise yourself sometimes. I mean, this, I couldn't have asked for it actually to, to be better with the silhouette and everything and the, the little bit of the flare. And, but maybe five years ago, I wouldn't even tried to shoot that because I'd be like, oh, it would have been too grainy. But on Instagram, it looks great. Another situation with the clouds, and of course I knew that the, the wheel, the, 
that's the Pacific Wheel in Santa Monica on the pier. And for years, I wanted to get a really nice shot of that. And I actually put that on a tripod with a little NX Mini camera. I think they might have one over there. It's a little tiny camera. But I ended up, someone asked me to put that in, a, in an auction for, like it helps war veterans. And somebody bought that photo for a lot of money and ended up helping out uh, war veterans, which made me feel really good. And I hope it helped them out. Early morning light, you almost can't go wrong with that, you know. My girlfriend and I walked out, and it was just an incredible morning, and it helps to get up early. I'm not a morning person, but every time I get up early, I'm like, I should get up early more often because the light is incredible. I mean, so just try to shoot in the magic hour in the morning, the hour, you know, the hour before the sun rises, and then maybe half hour after it rises, you have beautiful light and it, it adds so much to your images. This is in the Venice Beach Canals. Um, Matt Grenig, Gronig used to live at this house and he, I think he put those lights up years ago. But the canals are very hard to shoot because they're, 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 just, they're busy, there's stuff everywhere, houses, and I, that's the first shot in 20 years that I have of the Venice canals that I actually really like. So it took 20 years for me to get a photo of the Venice canals that I can show on a, on a slide presentation like this. And that's because it's in my neighborhood. I go all the time. I've shot a million shots of it that I don't like. I kept learning. And then I realized, man, these lights are going to really add something to this photo that will make it a little bit unique. I mean, this is just absolutely a natural moment. I, I tried to, st when I walked up, the parents were there, they looked at me, I, I nodded at them, they nodded back, they didn't think I was some creeper like shooting kids. And this photo just came together and um, when it comes together like that, it's just such a good feeling because for 20 years, for 20 years I'm, I'm, I've been trying to get a photo of a bunch of kids playing in the water with the beautiful light and it, and it just, this was the one that to me popped more than any of them ever. We get, when the fog comes in, that's a real challenge to shoot in the fog, but it's a real chance to get wonderful photos. And I had been driving around for about an hour and I didn't see anything. Passed by this volleyball court. And I'm like, that might work. And it worked better than I thought it would actually. And um, that's just perseverance. I didn't give up in the fog. I was getting really frustrated because I wanted to have something. I was trying to post every single day on, on Instagram at that time. And that's a real challenge in itself, shooting every day. It, you push yourself. So like I said before, you become part of the environment. They start to notice you. They know you're not like some weirdo, if people come up to me and they say, uh, please don't take my photograph, I'm always, uh, absolutely, I'm sorry, no problem. But I like to get real moments, so I don't, I don't typically go up and say, hey, can I get you shooting this? But don't look at me, I want it to look real. No, I want it to be real. So it's kind of a catch-22, so if someone immediately is objecting to me shooting, I apologize immediately, move on. This guy, they have a um, car show about once a month in the parking lot right down from where I live at the beach. And I was just sitting there for waiting for the perfect shot. And I wasn't getting it, I wasn't getting it. It was too busy, there were just cars everywhere and motorcycles. So then I, I, I changed my angle and I thought, oh, the sky's looking nice and blue. So I just parked myself on the ground and this guy just drove through I took the photo and I actually went up to him afterwards and showed it to him, which I recommend doing a lot because people like it and maybe you send them an image or something and 
because they're helping you by letting you take a photo and you're helping them by sending them a, an image. And now, whenever I go down there to the car show, they, they know me now. So, This is a very challenging thing to shoot. There's a graffiti area, public graffiti walls in Venice, and I just never got a good shot of it. It's super hard. And this was just an accident. I was like, oh, this is pretty cool with the guy spray painting and the, the, the light's really interesting. And I was just shooting. That guy just walked through the frame, and it, that's what made it. You know, without him there, it would have been decent, but I love the guy on the, on the right. Another thing, the slow shutter speed. I put that on a, on a little tripod, basically on the ground. And I, there's a Samsung app that you can remotely control their cameras with. I just waited, kept shooting, kept shooting, and that was the one I chose. But no one even knew I was taking those photos the whole time. It was hilarious. I, lo I love it when people, I don't feel like I'm intru intruding on their, their space in any way if they don't notice. And, they look good, and you can't tell who they are. I try not, to, try not to really show faces unless I get the approval. So I'm really trying to get photos that show humans but doesn't show their identity. That, that, I think that's the way to go, unless they give you that they're OK. Uh, I cropped that out. Believe me, the whole ball's in there. But um, that was just recently. I was trying to get some shots of these guys playing volleyball. Those boats just came in because I, I kept working it, and my girlfriend was with me. She's like, come on, let's go. I'm like, that's not quite right yet. And then I was shooting, and I saw the boats, and it just all came together. It's just patience. An extra five minutes, sometimes, that'll, that'll do it. It'll, it'll bring the image right to you. These, the beach is like the best place in the world to shoot at a low angle. I love the reflections, and I mean, it's just kind of, it's just a, a, a nice moment. There's, there's nothing powerful about that or impactful, but it's a nice moment, and it, it soothes me to look at it. And actually, after, if I'm out shooting a fire or some kind of court case all day, first thing I want to do is take off my shoes, go out to the beach, and look for scenes like this and it, it just totally brings all the pressure of the day just goes out the window and I'm feeling really nice out there. It's, it's, it's a real privilege to be able to do that. Oh, that got cropped. Oh, that's the skate park again. Mixed light sources are great for Instagram. Some tungsten lights on the park there and the, that's like maybe 20 minutes after sunset and the sky goes a nice dark blue and the contrast of the light, the mixed lighting is what made it come together. It's kind of a boring subject actually, but the mix, if you can see artificial light and natural light and you can mix those, you don't need the filters. That's a, that's a natural filter right there. That's another photo I wouldn't have shot before. I, I, you know, I thought, well, maybe it's blown out and stuff, but shooting Instagram and shooting in Venice Beach on a regular basis has, has expanded the way I look at everything. Like, and I just love the light on that. It's helped, it's helped me so much to understand light doing these kind of things. And when I first started doing Instagram, I was doing the hipstamatics on the iPhone. I don't know if any of you guys of the hipstamatic, but it's all filtered. And then I started trying to shoot on my assignments. But it, so it would look like if I had an Instagram filter, but I'm actually just shooting it in camera. And that's, that's my, my main goal, because I don't really use filters anymore, ever. They were shooting American Gladiator over in the back there, and that's the lights coming in. And another example of mixed light, and it's, it looks like a filter, right? So, and uh, I think that's pretty much what I have. If anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. <laughs>